Hello Medical Coders. In today's video, we are going to continue our chapter specific guidelines, ICD-10 CM. We are going to see chapter 12, Diseases of the Skin and Subcutaneous Tissue, L00 to L99 series. This is Surya Johnson, your medical coding guide. If you are new to this channel, I am Surya Johnson. I am a medical coding professional. In this channel, I teach everything under the medical coding world. All about the medical coding guidelines, exams, how to crack the exam, tips, tricks, and how to appear for an interview. And all the questions that you ask in this medical coding field, I'm here to help you out. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so you'll not miss any of my future medical coding related videos. In my last video, I've already posted chapter 10 which is diseases of the respiratory system J00 to J99 and also U07.0 series. So these chapters already have covered my previous ICD-10 CM up to chapter 10. So if you've not watched that, I'll put the link in the description box below. You can go first watch those things and get back to this guideline. So there is no chapter 11 disease of the digestive system K00 to K95 series. There is no specific guidelines in choosing uh, the codes from this series. Hence, there is no guidelines for this chapter. In today's video, we're going to see about chapter 12, diseases of the skin and subcutaneous tissue L00 to L99. So this is about the skin and subcutaneous tissue, which is the integumentary system. I have a shallow look on what is integumentary system. I have already posted detailed video about each system based on the root suffix prefix words want to know in detail about the system you can go and watch those videos as well i'll put the link in the description box below integumentary system it includes the epidermis dermis hypodermis and there are glands associated to this uh, skin then we have hair and nails so these are the parts of integumentary system so in general the integumentary system which is the skin and subcutaneous tissue is a barrier it protects the internal organ from external harm like from organisms or from injury and it also regulates the body temperature and it maintains the cell fluid so these are the general function of integumentary system all the medical coders should be aware of the basic anatomy and pathophysiology all these things should be understood should be known to a medical coder because if you have an idea about the case about the anatomy about the pathophysiology it will be very much helpful to pick the codes easily i already posted videos on the anatomy based on prefix suffix and root words you can watch those videos as well i'll put a link in the description box below because all coders should know the basic anatomy and if you want to know in depth aspect of a medical coder what all you should learn in the anatomical part you can email me i have a hundred plus pages of PDF dedicated completely for the anatomy and pathophysiology with all the medical terminologies with all beautiful pictures and uh, the disease condition and common disease conditions occurs in each anatomical structures so if you want this PDF you can very well email me or Instagram me I'll give the details now let's get into the chapter 12 disease of the skin and subcutaneous tissue the first not much vast guideline in skin and subcutaneous tissue we'll be talking about only the pressure ulcer and non-pressure ulcer so first we have to know what is a pressure ulcer what is a non-pressure ulcer so pressure ulcer means damage to an area of the skin like any part of the skin gets damaged because of constant pressure on the area for a long time for example this happens more commonly in bedridden patient patients who cannot walk being on the bed for a so long time right those patients or patients who don't move around frequently they put a pressure for a long period of time in one part of the body it's a constant pressure for a long time what happens this lessens the blood flow the affected area the area where the pressure is getting for a long time blood flow will be lessened which leads to tissue damage and tissue death this is called as as so it will be like, looking like a sore a wound slowly it will start as a sore redness wound and then in de in depth it will go and affect the subcutaneous tissue in certain cases it may affect the deep tissues so this is the pressure ulcer ulcer caused by a constant pressure for a long period of time so what is non-pressure ulcer it is a type of pressure 
but it is not because of the constant pressure on a particular area for a long time this might be for example because of venous or arterial insufficiency or excessive moisture in the body uh, or in a particular area excessive moisture is there or because of injury this might cause this a non pressure ulcer is not because of constant pressure or it is because of some other condition so for non pressure ulcer there will be always a related condition led to this non pressure ulcer so you have this in mind when we are going to non pressure ulcer we'll be i'll explain in detail about this this guideline the first one a pressure ulcer stage codes so when coding pressure ulcer we'll be looking into important two things first thing is identifying the site we'll get when you get into the guideline you'll know in detail identifying the site and the second one is the stage of the pressure ulcer so the first point under pressure ulcer is pressure ulcer stages so the pressure ulcer codes are in the category l89 pressure ulcer in that you can very well see it will be divided as per the site the location like elbow back like that so the location will be identified easily in that guide in that codes and then the important thing you'll be noticing is the stage of the pressure ulcer what stages are there in the pressure ulcer so as per the icd 10 sim classification pressure ulcer stages are based on severity so in guideline in icd 10 sim codes you can see stages 1 2 3 4 and then you'll be seeing deep tissue pressure injury that is also a type of stage and then you'll be seeing unspecified stage and then there is also unstageable we'll see what is unstageable and unspecified in the later guideline so you'll be coding appropriate l89 codes identifying the patient's site and the stage of the pressure ulcer so two things should be taken care first what is the site and second what is the stage of the pressure ulcer how do you define the pressure ulcer stages sometimes the doctors might not document it as stage 1 pressure ulcer stage 2 pressure ulcer no they will not document the stage instead we use the medical terms so when you see these medical terms you have to understand what stage the patient's pressure ulcer is and you will be coding with the correct diagnosis because the doctor is not mentioning exactly stage 4 stage 3 and all it doesn't mean it goes to the unspecified stage you should look into the documentation for the medical terms stage 1 means it is a red blue or purplish area first appears like a bruise it looks like a bruise on the skin there is no opening there is no source open sores are not there just discoloration like a red blue or purple color which looks like a bruise on the skin may be warm to the touch or sometimes it may be itchy it might have burning sensation so these things are all stage 1 so stage 2 will it is a bruise which becomes an open sore so it's the next stage there will be a bruise the red color bluish purplish colors will be there and there is also an open sore like an abrasion like when you have an abrasion skin there will be a, not depth right just on the top layer of the skin you'll have a small abrasion that kind of abrasions or blisters small open sores becomes a stage 2 next we have the stage 3 so open sore we saw in the stage 2 just deepens a bit and looks like a small crater a crack like that a small opening in depth opening not very deep just extra to the stage 2 and this will be like often with a dark patches of skin around the edges so there will be an open sore bit deepen and then there will be dark patches on the skin edges stage 4 we have the the damage spreads to the muscle bone and joints so it next stage is stage 4 is already affecting the muscles bones and joints and this one can lead to osteomyelitis this one can also be stage 4 can also be a life threatening blood infection because the muscle is exposed bones are exposed or joints are exposed so there might be infections bone infection leads to osteomyelitis if there is a blood infection through this open sore there might be a sepsis So these are the four stages there is also one stage which is the deep tissue pressure injury so what is deep tissue pressure injury so it will be very darker in color going deep into the tissues and also there might be deep wounds or blisters filled with blood means it went deep into the tissue so this is called deep tissue pressure injury so these are the stages regarding the unstageable i'll explain when i'm talking about the next point 
So based on these words, you have to understand what is the stage of the pressure ulcer and what is the site location of the pressure ulcer and then you'll be choosing the code from the series L89 series. So this is how you should understand and identify the pressure ulcer from the documentation if the stage is not specifically documented only the medical terms are used so the second one is the unstageable pressure ulcer so what is unstageable pressure ulcer these are certain type of stage 3 or stage 4 injury which are covered by dead tissue we'll just compare a scenario so you'll understand what is this for example patient got wounded in his knee after a certain period of time, the wound gets healed, right? When it's healing, it creates a death tissue, a scar or a death tissue, black colored death tissue, it will appear and then it will peel off and then it will get healed. So this is the healing stage. So in certain cases of ulcer, what happens? The ulcer remains inside the skin. The air is ulcer, either stage 3 or stage 4, we don't know. And also there is a layer of black death tissue on the top of the ulcer. It doesn't mean it is healing, it means there is ulcer underneath this tissue, dead tissue. But the doctor is not able to see what type of ulcer, what stage of the ulcer because there is a dark dead tissue on top of this ulcer covering that ulcer completely. So in this scenario, the doctor cannot identify what is the stage of this skin ulcer. So in that scenario, you will be coding it as unstageable pressure ulcer. So it is difficult to see the severity of the injury because of this covering. So you'll be coding that as unstageable. Later, the unstageable, if the doctor is cleaning the dead tissue and after investigating the pressure ulcer, the unstageable state might change to the stages. So the second point here is assignment of the code of unstageable pressure ulcer. So L89 point, whatever it is, ends with zero. So unstageable pressure ulcer, L89 point, numbers and then the last zero is for unstageable pressure ulcer so should be based on the clinical documentation these codes are used for pressure ulcer whose stage cannot be clinically determined because example ulcer is covered by scar or has been treated with a skin or muscle graft so this code should not be confused with the codes unspecified stage yeah you should not get confused with the l89 point whatever numbers then ending with nine the ending with nine is the unspecified stage unspecified stage means doctor didn't mention the stage at all this is unspecified stage so when there is no documentation regarding the stage of the pressure ulcer then you'll be assigning the appropriate unspecified stage which ends with nine so if during an encounter the stage of an unstageable pressure ulcer is revealed after debridement so I, as you already told doctor is doing a debriment removing all the dead tissue then when the stage is revealed after debriment you can code the stage directly so the third point here is documented pressure ulcer stage so assignment of the pressure ulcer stage course should be guided by clinical documentation so if there is if the doctor is not documenting the stage exactly stage 4 stage 1 like that but the doctor is using all those medical terms you can very well search in the alphabetic index using the medical terms and it will lead to the correct stage so fourth point here is patients admitted with pressure ulcers document as healed in this scenario you will not be coding pressure ulcer code at all because the patient's pressure ulcer has already healed what about healing pressure ulcer that we'll see in the fifth point pressure ulcers documented as healing so if the pressure ulcer is described as healing you should code the pressure ulcer with the stage code so as long as it's not healed completely it is still there so the patient is still having that pressure ulcer. so based on the stage in the documentation you'll be choosing the pressure ulcer diagnosis for healing cases sixth point here is patient admitted with pressure ulcer evolving into another stage during the admission so the patient is admitted with one stage for example stage two pressure ulcer in the stay at the hospital this stage progresses into the higher stage in this scenario you'll be coding two separate codes so two separate codes for the site and the stage of ulcer on the admission and after the admission should be coded. Seventh point here is pressure induced deep tissue damage. So for pressure induced deep tissue damage or deep tissue uh, pressure injury, as I already told, there is a specific diagnosis which is L89 point and ends with 6. So the pressure as a ending with 6 is for the pressure induced deep tissue damage. So ending with 9 is for unspecified. Ending with 0 is for unstageable pressure ulcers 
So that's all about the pressure ulcer. Next we have about the non-pressure chronic ulcer B point. In that the first point patients admitted with non-pressure ulcers documented as healed. The same thing we see. So if it's healed, we should not code the non-pressure ulcer as well. The second point is non-pressure ulcers documented as healing. So you already know that right? what is that? If it is documented as healing, you should be still coding non-pressure ulcers. So the third point here under the non-pressure ulcer is patient admitted with non-pressure ulcer that progresses to another specific, another severity level during the admission. What is the guideline? Yes, exactly. You're right. The same one. You should be coding two separate codes to identify this non-pressure ulcer that was there during the admission and then the non-pressure ulcer that was being progressed during the admission. This is all about non-pressure ulcer, non-pressure chronic ulcer. And this is not in the guideline, but I'll tell you this one. I was already told non-pressure chronic ulcers are not because of prolonged pressure for a long time, as I told, right? So it's always related to something. So this is not the etiology, this is the manifestation. So what is etiology and manifestation? Go and check out in my general coding guidelines. So there is some other cause, etiology, there is a cause manifestation so because of that cause disease or injury venous or arterial insufficiency the manifestation that is the non-pressure ulcer has happened so when you are coding non-pressure ulcer it is always advised to code the etiology what is the reason that has caused this non-pressure ulcer so for encoding non-pressure ulcer you should not only focus on non-pressure ulcer diagnosis code you should also focus on the diagnosis which has caused this non-pressure ulcer have this in mind Hope this video is very clear about the disease of the skin and subcutaneous tissues. If you have any doubts in this, please feel free to ask it in the comment section below or you can email me. And you can also Instagram me to this email ID and my Instagram ID. If you're not following me in Instagram and Facebook, please follow. If you find this video to be useful, please hit the like button. It will mean a lot to me and share with your medical coding friends or friends who are interested in medical coding. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so you'll not miss any of my coding related videos. This is Surya Johnson, your medical coding guide.